This is must-see TV right here. I'll shut Netflix down with this crap. But this is good. Dude, it is smoking hot out here. <laughs> it's well into the 90s. The fan's running in my shed back here. What you doing, honey? Hey, what you doing, baby? Sweetie, what you doing? You eating my good clover? A little bit different video today. I am gonna talk about this heat and I'm gonna talk about things that you can do to your lawn because a lot of people are real worried about putting fertilizer down on lawns right now because it's so hot and a lot of people are dry. Like we, we went from real wet, now we're real dry and hot. <laughs> so we're still humid. But I'll, I'll talk about a few things we're doing. I'll give you some updates on the front and the back. What can you put down now? What is safe to put down? What won't hurt your lawn? Focus on your soil, a few of those things. Then I'll just sort of drag the camera along. So one thing I think that's important to understand is uh, very seldom do I set up video shoots. I think you'll notice if you follow my channel at all, I generally just grab a camera and start shooting what I'm doing. So that's kind of where we are today on this video. Yesterday, we just about died. John was here, Jeff was here, Ryan was here, I was here, and we were working and working and working. And then about noon, we basically all had heat exhaustion. I mean, the guys were just, we were all soaking wet, drenched, and I said, we're calling it a day. So I gave him today off. Ryan actually went to watch a soccer match in Atlanta, and uh, so I said, everyone just take the day off. We'll come back tomorrow. But uh, of course, I am back up at 5 a.m. doing stuff around here, so I figured I'd just show you what I'm doing. We'll talk a little bit about the heat, we'll talk about stuff we can put down, and uh, then I'll just sort of drag the camera around. That's what I'll do. Whew, man, this is my, this is my second change of clothes. It's 12 o'clock. So, I was soaking wet. I went inside. I'm having to change clothes two and three times a day working out here because we just get soaking wet. My refrigerator in the shed is full of water and Gatorade Zeros. <laughs> We're just sucking them down all day. It's crazy. Let's talk about, first of all, I want to show you this front area. So the first thing I want to do is I want to put, put up a picture of what it looked like when we first had this property, when we first came on here. And if you look at this picture, you can see the dock. So you can see all the trees, you can see the junk. There were swing sets, gas grills, gas tanks. It was an absolute disaster, it was a mess. Now I'm gonna try and recreate what it looks like. So this is sort of that same sort of picture in here and you can see what we've done. We have come through here and we have spent months and months and months cleaning up the whole property, including this area which we took all the trees off of, and now we've planted Bermuda, we put in irrigation, and it actually looks nice. And, of course, the whole house remodel, and that sunroom right there looks out on this pond, so it really works out well. It just, it's a, it's a fantastic way to sit there and look at it. But one of the things I want to talk about today, and one of the things I'm doing out here, is I'm putting out Dirt Booster. Why am I putting out Dirt Booster? It's because it's completely safe there's no nutrients you can't, it can't you can put it out in this heat and this dry weather you can put out dirt booster every single day it's not going to matter same thing with humichar i'm getting ready to do a humichar treatment out here too and those really are the two things you can do that at no initial there's no nutrients in them right away now dirt booster because it has organic matter will slowly break down and naturally re release nutrients if your grass needs it but you can like i said it's no way to burn your lawn you can put it down as much as you want, as often as you want, it doesn't matter. It has organic matter, corn distillates, molasses particles, biochar, humic acid, mycorrhizal fungi spores, and good microspores. Really for me out here, this was bare dirt, so I know it was barren. There's probably no mycorrhizal fungi in existence out here, and that's what I'm doing. Now what I'm also gonna do, if you watched my last video, I was out here trying to spray super juice, 
Well, finally, the 20 to 1 spray bottles are back in. So I bought, I bucket, I put that super juice, the rest of it, in storage. And I'm going to mix in some more mycorrhizal fungi. I'll do a separate video on that. And then I'll come out here and spray it again. Why am I focused on mycorrhizal fungi? It's because if these are your roots, I've said this many times, mycorrhizal fungi, everywhere on, everywhere on the planet, it's a symbiotic relationship between plants and that fungus. It's a good fungus. Here are your roots. Mycorrhizal fungi spores come in and attach to your roots. And then they go out and they extend that root zone. So they go out and they grow and they extend it. They send water and nutrients to your plant. And basically your plant sends back sugars to that fungus. So they work together and it extends your root zone. It helps bring up water, bring up nutrients that your plant can't reach. It'll reach out and grab them. That's why it's so important. Up in the gardens, we do this all the time with our dirt booster compost piles. Um, it adds that and then they just do fan. We use no fertilizers up in our vegetable garden just to prove a point. We don't have anything against fertilizers. We just want to prove a point that if you do that, you use that, you don't have to use fertilizer. 97 degrees, no rain. I pull up my 10 day forecast. I have a special farm report that tells me uh, rain in the next seven days. I'm supposed to get 0 0.01 inches rain in the next seven days. <laughs> and I've had none for days. It's going to be dry out here. So uh, Humichar is fine and uh, Dirt Booster is fine. Now if you are not in a drought and it's hot or you have irrigation like I have out here, Green Shocker is a great fertilizer or Super Juice, either one. Use either one and they are so mild, you don't have to worry. It's just a little bit of nutrient, a little bit of iron, a little bit of micros, some humic, and it's the perfect summer for even cool season lawns. You guys can put out Green Shocker, it takes you 10 minutes to put it down and it gives you that nice green pot. So what I'm doing now on this out here, uh, in a little bit, I'm gonna put out some dirt booster. I'm gonna put dirt booster out on here, which I just did. And then I'm running my irrigation system. I'm really running it at night real heavy because this is a new germination. And for me, I feel so blessed because <laughs> I don't have to pay for water anymore. I have a shallow well that's just committed to my irrigation. We have a deep well for the house. So I'll put out Dirt Booster, um, I'll show you, I've shown you this, and I'll show you the little update on the back and maybe take you up to the guard, just show you some weird stuff that's going on. So here we go. One thing when you're working with a raw piece of ground and it's been like raw dirt, there's not gonna be a whole lot of mycorrhizal fungi spores in the soil. If you had previous vegetation, you're good. But when you come into an area like this, it's just basically raw dirt, you need to do something. So I'm gonna put this down and then when my hose and bottles come, I'm gonna spray the rest of my super juice and I'm gonna add some more um, microbes and mycorrhizal fungi in a powder form. I'll show you that later. But today, before it gets super hot, I'm gonna put this out and I'm gonna give it another water before the sun starts to hit. Again, I've got free water, so I don't have, I can water as much as I want. And this is looking really good. My crabgrass is starting to die off. I'm concerned because it looks like I might have some goose or quack in here, which means I probably can't kill it with this new grass. We'll have to wait till next year for that with pre-emergent. one of those things I just don't like to do. <laughs> so I've got a, I gotta take out all my seats. I gotta take out the center console. I gotta open this whole thing up. Oil filter is located right here. Drain plug is up underneath under that tight ass spot. And then I got a drain pan under here. I got my oil. It's gonna take 2.1, uh, 2.2 quarts, somewhere around there. Wrenches, gloves, glasses, Emergency brake on, brick behind the wheel, and I'm already starting to get soaking wet sweat. Just another day. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> oh. Put a fat guy under a little, look at that piece of wood jammed up there. Oh. Put a fat guy under a little skinny place that never ends well. This is the part everybody hates. Ah. 
there. Just remember how this thing's got a this thing's got a plug. It's got a spring and it's got a screen. And you got to remember how all that goes in together. Always have extra gloves. <laughs> all right. So someone will probably ask. I use for these for my UTV on this one. It's a UTV oil 10W40 synthetic blend. I found you do not want to use a full synthetic. The synthetic blend is usually better. Long funnel, nice slow pour, 2.1 quarts. Is, this is must-see TV right here. I'll shut Netflix down with this crap. This is good. This is good stuff here. Uh, can you see that? I don't know if you can see that or not. There we go. 104, 105, 106. People wonder why I come out here and do short cycle watering on this. There's a reason for it, especially with this new young Bermuda. When you put a leveling or sand mix out, basically you're putting a lot of glass on your lawn. <laughs> so short cycle water, it evaporates, it helps cool a little bit. Um, I'm lucky because again I have the shallow well. Now we took this entire lawn off. This was a cool season lawn and there's no way it can survive in Georgia with this heat, humidity. So this has now all been seeded in Bermuda. Several different types of Bermuda and I've got germination everywhere. But we, in that leveling video, I mean that hole right there was the former septic tank hole. That's 12 inches of leveling mix. 12 inches of leveling mix, like three, four wheelbarrows full, just in that hole. And then this rut in here was about eight, 10 inches deep. So we had to come back and do a fourth seeding. This will be a Bermuda lawn, a beautiful Bermuda lawn in about six weeks. It's gonna take a while, but it's all germinating. It's fine, I just gotta keep water going to it. And that's the problem. <sighs> so I gotta run up. I've been out here all morning working and I was soaking wet again. I gave the guys the day off today and uh, I had to change clothes. Went upstairs, I was working on some video stuff and some website stuff for you guys. And, and I said, man, I gotta go check the mail. Then I gotta go up, I gotta check the garden. I'm sure the baby deer are out there somewhere. Maybe I'll show you them. But I've got a few restarts on that garden up there because you know, fungus has moved in, blight has moved in. So we're doing some restarts, but I'm telling you guys, I can't get over this front area. I keep looking at it and it's just amazing. It's gonna be great. Four weeks from now, it's gonna be gorgeous. So someone asked, a couple of people have asked how we protect against uh, chiggers and ticks. I actually mix up, you can buy, I'll, maybe I'll put a link to it down below. There's a yellow permethrin bottle that's made for camping gear and clothing. And you can spray that on. Now permethrin actually kills ticks. So they get on you. Now, we have a rule here. Boots, long socks, and long pants. <laughs> uh, I can get away with shorts, but you have to have long socks at least. And we spray our socks and our boots with permethrin. I make up a different spray. It's actually kind of a cattle formula. It's a little bit stronger, but it's the first thing everyone does now. They've learned. If they didn't listen to me, they've learned. So everyone does it. So someone was asking, someone made a comment in the last video, um, wasn't I worried about the shade on my backyard in Bermuda? Well, the storm, we lost 25 trees and the storm kind of took care of that. See this big tree? Half of it's sitting right here. That thing is massive. So it had an old break plus this new break and then the rest of the tree is leaning that way. That whole tree is coming out and I'm considering taking that whole tree out. Trust me. The last thing I need is more trees on this property. The other thing that's uh, another note in about two or three weeks, uh, my land clearing guy, the same guy that did my pond berm, is gonna come in and we're gonna have this corner right here for like this corner taken out of trees. And we're gonna open up that pond view in here. I mean, I've got 20 acres of nothing but trees all back in here. I'm not worried about it, but these trees could actually fall and come here. We had one miss the fence uh, two months ago missed the fence by a foot. Ryan came out here and cut that out. But we're just gonna take this out, clear this open. It's just, you know, snakes, crap, all kinds of stuff. So we're gonna open that up. Someone asked about my filtration system. 
This is the first stage of filtration, and I'll go ahead and I'll do a video on this in a couple of weeks, but this is my first stage of filtration. So I have a pre-filter, carbonized tank, post-filter, UV filter. So I'll do a video on this. I'll show you this is the first step of my filtration. Then when it gets to the house at the sink, I have another triple filter. I have the world's cleanest water in my house. It's cleaner than, it's cleaner than bottled water. So I'll show you that. So the babies and the mom are out here in the field and they usually just kind of ignore me. And then you see she's sort of just going back and eating and that is just so cool. They've gotten to the point where they just kind of tolerate me. They know I'm out here gardening and I mean they're just right here in this field. Oh my goodness, that's so cool. What you doing baby? Isn't that the neatest thing? Just to be able to come up here, work in the garden, and have my girls out here. That's just so cool. Hey, Mama, you're doing a great job. She hides them over here behind the garden. She takes care of them. If you, uh, if you haven't watched my baby deer video, which is three minutes, you have to go watch that video. And if you have kids, go show them that video. It's such a cute video, and uh, I watched that. I've watched that thing. 20 times you know just it's just such a cool video again the baby deer video go watch it but i'm going to go up here and quietly try and work up in here in this garden our gardens have been hit by blight and fungus because of this hot humid and lots of rain now all of a sudden it's dry then we had that storm 60 miles an hour wind came through here all the tomato plants got blown over so but surprisingly we came back and we put dirt booster on the the peppers and all the tomatoes and man they just shot right back up and look at this so I've got new flowers I've got baby tomatoes the problem is is the good witch has had been having to take care of a family member after surgery so she hasn't been able to come up here and help so we've kind of just sort of let this be I need to get some water on these pepper plants you can see them kind of wilting this is the same thing with your lawn if you see a plant wilting you shoot it with a little bit of water you don't have to drench it shoot it with a little bit of water and do that on a daily basis until mother nature kicks in and does a deep watering then you can stop watering for a good week <laughs> but every plant here every plant here this is one plant even with all the blight and new growth i mean that has what 20 red tomatoes multiply that times 30 plants again this is a year of experimentation i we went overboard, obviously. We're planting different varieties to see what happens. Um, I don't need, I don't need two rows of green peppers. I got tons of green peppers. But again, we were just experimenting. And I'm kind of planting what we like to eat, more tomatoes and more tomatoes. The um, zucchini and yellow squash, we came through here, long story short, we took all the foliage off except for the baby stuff. And now all that baby stuff, you can see it's starting to grow back. I got a little bit of diseased leaves I need to take care of, but look. But look what's coming up. Now I got beautiful little zucchinis. I got probably about 20 beautiful young yellow squash. Uh, my beans. Beans got burned out. We took them out. We replanted. We got a whole new crop of green beans. Cucumbers. Disease kind of hit into there. We're going to take that out. We're going to move the cucumbers over in here. And then what I'm going to try and do... We got this all humped up. I think I'm gonna try and plant some sweet potatoes in here. It probably won't work because it's so damn hot, but it's worth a shot. But what we did with this orchard is the Japanese beetles came in here and destroyed this while I was away on vacation. And we've actually started spraying this to help fight them off. We got beetle bags up but it was hard to maintain it. So what we did is I had, I put in that French drain and I had extra French drain pipe. So what I had my guys do is this, I told them cut a piece off, then split it open and wrap it around. And now you can weed eat and the trees are protected. So you'll see a bunch of white collars in here and that's all just for weed eating. So we can go in and keep this nice and clean. Now I've lost I've lost probably 10% of my trees because of that beetle situation. But a lot of them, like these, these are peach trees. You can see where, you can see where the beetles have been in here eating it. 
Um, but they're coming back. I just got to stay on spraying them. Those are plums, peaches, pears, and apples. <sighs> the pears are doing the worst. I lost three pear trees. So I probably have to replant those. But again, this is long term. You know what? We're going to wait two years for that. But there was nothing going on in this field. So let's create something there. What can we put in there? So this field was a nasty clumping fescue field full of red ants and uh, David comes up here and bush hogs. So he bush hogged and I told him, I said, you know what, I always wanted a cornfield. I wouldn't mind putting corn in it. And before I could finish that sentence, he's like, I'm going to go in and get my tractor and we'll, we'll do some strips in it. So we planted corn in here this year. We found out, uh, we did soil testing afterwards. We really couldn't get dirt booster into the soil. It, this field is low on phosphorus. High in potassium, low in phosphorus. Good luck trying to balance that out. But it also, the corn is overcrowded and it's dry. So we have baby corn, and what is baby corn? Let me see if I can show you. Plus we had army worms move in here. Let's see if I can find a piece of corn. It's, so most of this corn looks like this, baby corn. It's uh, underdeveloped. It's not finished all the way up. Some of this is actually eaten off by army worms or silkworms, whichever it is. And uh, that's the way it is. Again, we're not worried about this. I'm not eating corn, so this will remain standing all winter for the deer. This will dry up. The deer use it as cover. They actually come in here and bed at night. And uh, it works out. They'll have, a, they'll have a food source and a cover source all winter long. And they come through here, man. They absolutely come through this area. So it's five o'clock, I took a break, I finally ate. UPS dropped off a couple packages. I'm waiting for his load Let's again. Humachar. So I'll be putting the humachar mainly on the front. I've already done a couple treatments out back. And that soil is actually looking pretty good. When we did the core aeration, we were really happy with the way the soil looked. Out here, eh, it's not horrible, but it could really use it. So. Dirt booster and humichar is what I'm focused here. When my green shocker comes in, probably probably tonight or tomorrow, I'll put another light coat of burnt, uh, green shocker, and then again, the mycorrhizal fungi and super juice spray, I'll go down on here. And then just water, man. This is the, the key ingredient at this time. If you're dry and you're hot, unfortunately, what your lawn is missing is water. It's peaceful out here. I can't even go down on that dock and fish. It's so hot. I have to wait for the sun to set. I mean, you just absolutely burn up. Anyways, talk to you later. Die.